Congratulations, Carice, for sure. As we look outside right now, we are still tracking Dorian, so we'll just kind of pick up right where we left off earlier in the newscast. Here it is swirling north of Puerto Rico, and it is continuing to the northwest. So again, this is the forecast path becoming a category two in the next couple of days, then maybe a category three, and then weakening as it moves over land as we get into Sunday and Monday uh, over Florida. So it may be a category one as it emerges eventually, possibly in the Gulf of Mexico as we get into Monday and and Tuesday. So as for beyond that path, that's the big question for our area, of course. And notice that model consensus is pretty good over the next several days. There is a big spread, but it is beginning to shrink a little bit compared to just earlier today from Jacksonville to north of Miami. And earlier today, we had a couple of outliers bringing it closer to New Orleans. Those have kind of fallen in line with the rest of the computer model. So there is the turn to the north and northeast that we are expecting right now. No model brings it to our area or has big impacts for New Orleans or our Mississippi coastal spots. So we will have to watch it. Of course, anything getting into the corner of the Gulf of Mexico, we're going to watch and be interested in. But at this point, it doesn't look like we'll have big effects from Dorian. That could change, of course, as we are still a ways out. This is our GFS model showing it approaching the uh, Sunday time frame, the eastern coast of Florida, and then moving into Georgia and just kind of completely fizzling. The European model shows a little different scenario. It takes it farther to the south and notice it has it closer to the Miami or north of Miami, maybe around West Palm. Palm Beach or Fort Lauderdale area as we head into the weekend, the end of the weekend, and then brings it up to the north along the Gulf Coast. Notice though, still removed actually from our area, maybe toward the western edge of the Florida Panhandle, and then it brings it to the north and eventually out to the northeast and begins to weaken it as it gets over Alabama and uh, Georgia. This is the steering pattern for this week. This is why we're seeing it take this more westerly course. It's because of a ridge of high pressure building in and the circulation around that is kind of shooting it out to the west northwest. So how far the ridge builds in will determine, I think, how far north or south along Florida's coastline it will go. And that's why we have the spread in the model runs right now. The steering pattern for next week as we get into Tuesday, this is what we're thinking. The high builds in. This is a trough of low pressure that may try to pick up Dorian and turn it off to the north and northeast. We will also have high pressure building in from the west. And so actually our seven day forecast doesn't have any impacts from Dorian at this point, but it does have this high uh, keeping us hotter and drier as we head into the middle part of next week. So we're still a ways out. Something to watch for sure. We'll be tracking it closely, of course, and keeping you updated. But right now it looks like it could potentially enter the corner of the Gulf of Mexico Tuesday before turning north. And again, the average five day track area era excuse me, error is 500 miles. That's from New Orleans all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. So that's why there's that big spread in the model differences along the eastern Florida coast. We'll know a lot more as we get into, I think, especially Saturday. Tropical depression Aaron is still out there off the east coast of the US. This one will probably lose its tropical characteristics soon. It was a tropical storm, but it probably will no longer be a tropical depression as we head into the next maybe day or so and it moves over those cooler northern waters. Our local forecast what to expect the next couple of days. We have 70s and low 80s right now. We had some strong thunderstorms, especially over toward Baton Rouge this evening. Here's that cold front. The adjective really does not apply, but we are going to see the front move through as we head into tonight. It will bring drier but still hot weather the next couple of days and our humidity will go down. I actually think it might take a while though. Tomorrow you may not notice it so much. It may be more Friday and Saturday. Our wake up forecast should be fairly quiet, mild, a few clouds and again, maybe not feeling the effects just yet. We'll be in the 70s tomorrow morning and then tomorrow still hot. Highs near 92. Today we hit 95 at the airport. It will be a little less humid. You may notice it tomorrow, but as I said, I think it'll be more as we head into Friday and Saturday that we feel the break in humidity. Dew points instead of in the middle 70s might be low uh, or middle 60s, so we should be able to feel it. It will not be super drastic, but especially if you're north of the lake Friday and Saturday morning, some upper 60s plus the low humidity may feel pretty nice there. Notice the high pressure by the middle of next week keeps our rain chances low and keeps the temperatures going up. Buckle up. Tulane's offense looks to go.